close your eyes, bro. Okay, bro. What you see, bro? Nothing, bro. That's my world without you, bro. Bro. <laughs> Fantastic! Okay! Hey, guys! Hello, everybody! My name is Kat, and welcome back to Miss Cat Squad, the Let's Play and Geeky Talk Show that's all about you guys, guessed it, geek culture and video games. And also, you can consider us the Simon, hashtag Simon Protection Squad from Detroit Become Human. Fist bump to all you guys. Okay, today we're gonna be talking all about Simon. <laughs> That meme is golden. Give me the Detroit memes. They're golden. But hello, guys. Yeah, today we're going to talk all about the Simon Protection Squad, what we're all about. And we're going to be reacting to a video that you guys have been, you know, sending me over and over about Marcus Baby. Oh, baby Marcus. And Simon Baby. My bean Simons relationship as bros. You guys said that they have such a great bromance together. If you guys are a part of it, use that hashtag whether on Twitter, whether on Tumblr, whether on Instagram, whether anywhere that you are online, let the world know that you protect our son and our boy Simon, who is an amazing cute little small bean who we must protect because of his innocence. I would also like to give a shout out, a special shout out to squad member Joao, who, and I hope I said your name right, I usually butcher names, I'm so sorry. Joao actually recommended that I do react to this this uh, video about Simon and Marcus's bromance. And it's been a while that you've been sending this video, so you know what? Special shout out to you, my friend. Let's go. Boy. Run, Simon. I know we saved him, but we. Please tell me he's gonna save Simon, him. Simon, they're coming. I. I can't, Marcus. Bro! Get up, bro! Simon! Save your man! <laughs> what are you doing? That always made me mad about Nora. Like she'd always like leave him behind. But violent. <laughs> but I do love her. He's gotta be one of the most precious video games characters of all time. I can't move my legs. No. Okay, don't worry. We're gonna get you back. They're coming, Marcus. We have to jump now. We have to leave him behind. It's fine. Like no. Cyber protection squad. Come on, save him. won't be able to make the jump. If they find him, they'll access his memory. They'll know everything. We can't leave him behind. Well, we have to shoot him. That's murder. Girl! We can't girl! Kill him us. <laughs> you gotta do it. Help him. Help him. Help him. Help him. Save him. I won't kill one of our own. Shaboom. Simon, we gotta go. Oh. I'm sorry. My bean. Let's go. My bean. So sad. Like he, out of all of them, he's the most innocent leader. Like, ugh. Is this the bro hug? The bro hug! Yes! <laughs> Again, I support all the amazing ships of Detroit Become Human. Each and every single one is valid to me. Oh. Bro, we don't gotta say nothing to understand each other. We got each other, that's all that matters. <laughs> Bro, yes! <laughs> oh, my babies. No, what? Ow, oh, I didn't see this. Run, run! Babies! Oh my god! Oh God, no! Marcus. What? Does this actually happen? Well, yeah, of course it actually happens, but... Marcus, get it, son! Get it! What the heck? I hate these people. No. Marcus? Marcus? Marcus. Huh? Okay. 
okay. He sacrifices himself for... Are you kidding me? Oh my god. Simon. Ugh. will die with you. Our hearts are compatible. <laughs> are you kidding me? Si Simon! Oh, this game just got even darker. You're gonna do this to my bean? You're gonna do this to my bean? Oh, he loves him so much. Set our people free, Marcus. Simon. Simon. Why are you guys doing this to me, huh? <laughs> are you kidding me? He. He. That. That's it. You're gonna. You're gonna make me. You're gonna leave me off on that. What? So let me get this straight, guys. Let me get this straight. Our boy Simon sacrifices himself twice. There's a. There's a chance that he could die. How many times in this game? But twice he will sacrifice himself for Marcus. Our hearts are compatible. He loves him so much. Now, let's talk about this. Okay, you guys don't understand how much I love Simon. Why? Because he's that type of character, again, that he's self-sacrificial. He's just as much as Luther was with Kara and Alice, how he was like, I will sacrifice myself throughout this gameplay so you guys will make it out alive. And Simon, as I just saw, would do the same thing for Marcus. Thank God! We didn't have a chance to lose him during my playthrough because I would have lost it. I that our hearts are compatible. Now think about this, guys. He literally he legitimately rips out his own heart to give it to Marcus to support the cause. But not even that, because he wants Marcus to survive. Now, if that's not love, I don't know what is. Again, if you guys ship them, please let me know, because this is a beautiful relationship, because it's self-sacrificial. He literally, guys, didn't just give him his heart, he, he just ripped it out of his own chest and put it into Marcus's body. Like, that is bromance to the max. I don't know if there's any other bromance that's stronger than theirs. Like, I know we got Hank and Connor going on with their bromance, but this bromance, guys, he rips out his own heart. Does he? <laughs> oh my god! My boy! I just got more respect for my boy. Again, if you guys are part of Simon Protection Squad, please let me know, because my boy Simon, he, my boy Simon just ripped out his own mother flipping heart. It's just not for the cause, no. You could tell that he has affection for Marcus. And again, I again, I have to keep saying this, I support every ship from Detroit Become Human. And as I've noticed, Marcus be like tossed around left and right to like all these other characters. <laughs> like so many people ship him with so many different people I'm, I'm getting to realize because there's North times Marcus, there's Marcus times Simon, there's also uh, Marcus times Connor, and Marcus times Josh, you can't forget my boy Josh. But 
Is there a Marcus times Carl? Because, like, Marcus is shipped with everyone. Let's just, there's no doubt about that, that my boy, my son Marcus, is shipped with everyone. So, at this time now, I would really like to talk about Simon's character and why I think he's such a brilliantly casted and also brilliantly written and directed character. Now, there's a lot of characters out there who are very soft-spoken, and a lot of people don't tend to hear them or listen to those characters until, like, a given moment. And as I've just seen, that he is that sacrificial person where it's like, he will spend that moment and have that those times his, his most shining glory moments are the moments when he is suffering, of when he wants to put himself last before someone else and would sacrifice himself for the good of, you know, mankind, meaning android kind, and also for the good of his best friend Marcus. And from the beginning, Simon was that character who, again, he puts himself last. And he gives us, he teaches us a lesson in life where sometimes we do, he's a very humble character, you know, Simon, how he is. He's, again, soft-spoken, he puts himself last, he would sacrifice himself for the, the greater good. And there's a lot of people out there who tend to not be like Simon and tend to be more like North, where they think that violence is always the way to go, while Simon's always like, no, let's just be chill, let's let's be calm about things and, and try to get along. And even with Josh, Josh was all about like dialogue and this and that, while North was all like, I'm gonna go and get them! I'm the bad rebel girlfriend! Yeah. <laughs> But with how Simon is as an overall character and how he was directed, he was put onto this, this gameplay, how I view it as he's that self-sacrificial character. And it's really upsetting because I feel as if he feels like he's not of an importance. Like he would always put himself last before Marcus because he knows Marcus is the great leader. But if, if Simon became like the leader, because I know that we got North, Josh, and Simon running Jericho. If he became that leader, I feel as if he would be the one to always sacrifice himself. Like he, he, he looks like a little bean and a little angel. Like he looks like a pure little angel. That's what I'm getting at here. And how he, he jumped into battle to protect Marcus, guys. He's not the type to inflict violence upon anyone else. And in that moment, when they were doing, in that moment when they were marching and everything, when they're like, oh, stand back, you know, when I actually ran away from that battle instead of standing my ground, Simon threw himself at the, at the SWAT team to protect Marcus. He's not, he's not that guy to really do that. He's not that guy to say, hey, you know, I'm gonna swing into action here. No, I'm the soft-spoken in the background type of guy. I'm not the guy to take action, but he did. He did twice, so Marcus would stay alive. I have more respect for this character than I thought I actually would, so hashtag Simon Protection Squad for life, my friends. I feel as if Simon feels that way about himself, like he's not that important. You know, I feel like he would be willing to do that at any given moment because maybe he sees and views himself as just that background character that no one really cares about. And whenever I see people like that in real life too, where they feel like, ah, you know, I'm not important. I'm gonna put my dreams on hold for somebody else. It makes me so upset because people like Simon deserve to be heard too. Especially the soft-spoken characters, they deserve to be heard. And how he is, where he's just like, you know, I'm gonna throw my life away for somebody else's. That's great to know that he, and that's a great friend and a great bro right there. But to th so to make him think of himself that way, despite him being just an android, yeah, he is an android, yeah, he is a character. But what I feel is a Quantic Dream is trying to throw at us too, is kind of showing that he's just that type of guy who's like, I don't care about myself. You know, I, I don't really, I'm, I'm really a nobody. And I feel like Simon kind of stands up for the nobodies in life like I feel like that's type that's the type of character he is where he put himself last so someone else could outshine him because he feels like maybe he doesn't deserve it now I don't know much about his past before he went to Jericho but I feel as if maybe he was extremely like you know used and abused and hurt by a lot of people like they all kind of were in Jericho no, no matter what you think about it because they all escaped from their owners but you know, it's just, it upsets me, okay? Because if any of you out there, if you think of yourself as people who are just like the let down nobodies and you have to let somebody else first before your own dreams, it's unfair for you because you feel as if you're never gonna be heard. Or you feel like your opinions, they don't matter. And that's why Simon's character, why a lot of you have actually said to me why you relate to him is because you feel like you're that soft-spoken person. 
and you would do whatever it takes to protect someone you love. Now that's a great quality to have, but another quality to not have is don't feel as if you're that nobody, you know? Don't feel like you have to put your dreams on hold because you want someone else to outshine you. It's great to support others, but always make sure that you're supporting your own dreams too. And I've heard a lot of you talk about that too, is like, you like Simon would be willing to just end it because you want to make sure that someone else is better than you. You want to make sure that they are getting the success that you always dreamed you could have. And I feel, I feel like Simon would make a great leader. I really do, but him being that sacrificial character as much as Luther was to Kara and Alice, it, it upsets me because he he has to understand like and yes yeah again you guys know how passionate i am about characters i treat them like they're real life friends because they're friends to me i feel like he'd be willing to sacrifice himself at any given moment and not even think twice about it and that's good that's a good quality to have to protect the ones that you love but i also feel like he thinks he's a nobody and it's sad because he's such a pure being and there's so much quality that this guy does have so I would love to know, why do you love Simon? I would love to make a special episode that's all about the Simon Protection Squad and why you guys do love him. Please use that hashtag and let me know why you do love him. Spread this video with your friends to spread awareness about Simon's character because he, he's such a good guy. He's such a cute bean and ugh. I just wish there were more people out there that really did support him as much as I do because there's so much to talk about with him. There's there's so much to talk about with him. You guys know what time it is. It's time for those sweet, sweet positive comments. It's reading them positive comments with Kat. So today's comment is from Daniel Nieto. Again, if I say your name wrong, I am so sorry. And Daniel says, Hey Kat, I just wanted to say keep up the great work. Life has been a bit of a challenge, but every time I see you upload, I find an irresistible urge to click. I know I'm echoing everyone's opinion when I say it feels like I'm spending time with a friend. I hope one day you make it all the way to 1 million subscribers. We'll, behind, we'll be behind you the whole way. Daniel. Fist bump to you, my man. You know what? You said that you're having a challenging time, and you're like... Alright, before I get into the whole thank you moment, I, I just want to say this to you. I have moments in life where I feel like I'm so let down and I start doubting myself. And I, I've been there so many times. I've been there when life is so challenging. I've endured and survived a lot as, you know, The Last of Us does tell us. But you know what? You gotta hold on. You gotta hold on to that life as long as you can. Hold on to that willpower that you have and just go out there and, and take on whatever life is throwing at you. I for one believe in God and I always say that God gives us what we can handle. And no matter what, God is giving you what you can handle because he knows that you're a strong person. He knows that you can handle this type of stuff and why all this stuff is happening, the crazy things that happen in life is because he knows we can handle this type of stuff. All the hardships that I have been through, I've been able to endure and survive it because I know for a fact that that's God gave that to me for a reason he knows that you know when I went through abuse that I could handle that he knows that all the hardships and the self-doubt that I go through he's testing me and I you may not believe in God but I for one do and I I want to say this to you is that he knows what you can handle life and the universe they know what you can handle so no matter what is going on in your life at this given moment it's happening because the universe knows you can handle it as much of a strong person as you are and i for one as you guys do know because a lot of you have tuned in to, to watch our detroit become human gameplay i went through a lot of, of abuse and for my for my father and everything and but the thing is you have to understand god gave that to me for a reason why because he knew in a moment that i would be able to go on youtube and talk about it with you guys and help other people if i didn't go through that struggle i wouldn't be who i am today like if i didn't go through all those years of struggle i don't know who i would be and I'm thankful for that struggle because it, it built up that perseverance, which then built up my character, which then built who I am today. So for you, Daniel, I want to let you know, please know, and this is for everybody out there, life may throw curveballs at us. Life may be like, you know, like give us moments where we feel like we want to give up. You know, life may be like, hey, you know, it's, it's you're, you're a piece of crap or, you know, you're, you're, you're a nobody, but we have to we have to hit on hard back. We have to throw that ball back and say, "Look, 
We're going to take that baseball back. We're going to hit it, and we're going to hit a home run, and we're going to keep running. We're going to keep running to those bases and to those home bases until we reach home, until we reach those goals. We need to have that moment in our lives where we notice that we become stronger with all the struggle that we go through. So when I see comments like this, I want you guys to know that life will throw those balls at you. They will throw the curveballs at you like in baseball. <laughs> but... We have to be the one to carry that bat with us and swing that home run. Yeah, we may have fails here and there. Yeah, we may have foul balls and they may be going outside and we might be like, ah, oh, we're going to fail this game. We're going to lose it to the other side. There's always another game, guys. There's always another game of baseball, just like there's always another chance in life. The failures that you may make in life will be, again, you'll be given a moment of being tested and given the trials in life but there's always a moment to make, to make up for those mistakes. There's always gonna be a moment in life where you could say, hey, I am proud of myself and I'm going to hit those home runs. We're gonna have some home runs. We're gonna have some winning and losing at moments. There's good, we're never gonna always win at life, but there's always gonna be that moment in life where you'll notice that you do have a lot of wins and you will be thankful for those wins because it taught you a lot. So if you are having those days where you feel so down, and trust me, I still have those days. Just remember one thing that you will you will make that home run one day. And in life, you'll notice that, hey, all the struggles that I did go through, I went through for a reason. So fist bump to you, Daniel. Fist bump for that. Whether you tune in to put Miss Cat Squad on your TV or your PS4 or your, your mobile devices or your computer, no matter where, where I am sitting here, I want you to know that I am your friend. And this whole squad that we are building is all about friendships. You know, I'm happy that you guys can make friendship with each other. I'm happy that you consider me a friend because you know what? I didn't grow up with any friends and now I have a lot because of Miss Cat Squad. I have so many friends because of Miss Cat Squad. So fist bump to you guys. Fist bump. If you're, if you're fist bumping the screen right now, let me know. Take a selfie of yourself. Put it on Twitter. Put it anywhere and let me know if, this, if you consider this squad a friend. Because you know what? It is. And Daniel, again, thank you for that. Because this is what, again, it's all about, all about friendship. Sitting down on the couch and enjoying friendship together. So fist bump to you, my friend. Keep on, keep on winning. Keep on hitting those home runs. Because you will one day. Trust me, you will one day. And that goes out to all of you guys who are struggling in life. You will one day hit all those hum home runs. And you will one day notice that, hey, all those failures that were happened in life happen for a reason. So fist bump to that. All right, guys. So if there's anything that you would like me to react to for Detroit Become Human, let me know because I totally will provide that sweet, sweet Detroit Become Human content for you guys. But anyway, guys, again, hashtag Simon Protection. Protection. I can't. My Jersey accent's coming out. What the heck? Hashtag Simon Protection Squad if you are a part of it. I hope you guys have an amazing day. You stay safe out there. And as always, Miss Cats, until the next video, embrace your inner fangirl and your inner fanboy every single day. Yeah.